We start today with El Nur, the Light, Chapter Twenty Four, the Maulana Muhammad Ali translation. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, a chapter which we have revealed. A chapter which we have revealed and made obligatory, and wherein we have revealed clear messages that you may be mindful, the adulteress and the adulterer, flog each of them with a hundred stripes, and let not pity for them detain you from obedience to Allah, if you believe in Allah on the last day. And let a party of the believers witness their chastisement. So, you know, punishment is an open thing rather than this secret thing Western society likes to do because they can't handle the punishment of the criminals. So, of course, it gets worse for a lot of people. But the adul adulteress and the adulterer, um, the word is anybody who has sex outside of marriage. Um... It's not just the married ones. The adulterer cannot have sexual relations with any but an adulteress or an idolatress, a misassociator, and the adulteress. None can have sexual relations with her but an adulterer or an idolater, and this is forbidden to believers. Okay, let me re-render that. He who has sex outside of marriage cannot have sexual relations with any but who has but she who has sex outside of marriage are a misassociator, and she who has sex outside of marriage can cannot have sexual relations with her except he who has sex outside except one who has sex outside of marriage, are a misassociator, and it is forbidden to the believers. And those who accuse free women, and bring not for witnesses, flog them with eighty stripes, and never accept their evidence. And these are the transgressors, except those who afterwards repent, and act aright. Surely Allah is forgiving, merciful. And those who accuse their wives, and have no witnesses except themselves, let one of them testify four times, bearing a law to witness that he is of those who speak the truth, and the fifth time, that the curse of Allah be on him, if he is of those who lie, and it shall avert the chastisement from her, if she testify four times, bearing a law to witness that he is of those who lie, and the fifth let the wrath of Allah be on her, if he is of those who speak the truth. And were it not for Allah's grace upon you and his mercy, and that Allah is off returning wise, surely those who concealed, surely those who concocted the lie are a party from among you, deem it not an evil to you, and may it is good for you, for every man of them, is what he has earned of sin, and as for him among them, who took upon himself the main part thereof, he shall have a grievous punishment. Why did not the believing men and the believing women, when you heard it, think well of their own people, and say, This is an evident falsehood? Why did they not bring four witnesses of it, so, as they have not brought witnesses, they are liars in the sight of Allah. And that goes with anything, really. I mean, how can you say that something is the case and accuse people of crimes? Whether they're, you know, people say this about people in the news and such. They're not witnesses to the evidence. So why are they saying these things?
And were it not for Allah's grace upon you and his mercy, in this world and the hereafter, a grievous chastisement would certainly have touched you on account of the talk you indulged in, and when you received it on your tongues and spoke with your mouths, and that of which you had no knowledge, and you deemed it a trifle, while with the law it was serious. You know, those sort of accusations in my country get people killed. Um... And why did you not, when you heard it say, it beseems us not to talk of it, glory be to thee, and this is a great calumny. Allah admonishes you that you return not to the like of it ever again, if you are believers. Allah admonishes you that you return not to the like of it ever again, if you are believers, and Allah makes clear to you the messages, and Allah is knowing wise. Those who love that scandal should circulate, respecting those who believe, for them is a grievous chastisement in this world and the hereafter, and Allah knows while you know not, and were it not for Allah's grace on you and his mercy, and that Allah is compassionate, merciful. O oh, you who believe, follow not the footsteps of the devil. Surely he commands indecency and evil, and were it not for Allah's grace on you and his mercy, not one of you would ever have been pure, but Allah purifies whom he pleases, and Allah is hearing, knowing, and let not possessors of grace and abundance among you swear against giving to the near of kin and the poor and those who have fled in Allah's way and pardon and overlook. Do you not love that Allah should forgive you and Allah is forgiving, merciful? Surely those who accuse chaste believing women unaware are cursed in this world and the hereafter, and for them is a grievous chastisement on the day when their tongues and their hands and their feet bear witness against them as to what they did. On that day, Allah will pay back to them in full their just reward, and they will know that Allah, He is the evident truth, Unclean things are for unclean ones, and unclean ones are for unclean things, and good things are for good ones, and good ones are for good things. These are free from what they say, for the misforgiveness and an honorable sustenance. O oh, you who believe, enter not houses other than those other than your own houses, until you have asked permission and saluted their inmates. And this is better for you that you may be mindful, but if you find no one therein, enter them not, until permission is given to you, and if it is said to you, go back, then go back, and this is pure for you. And Allah is knower of what you do. It is no sin for you to enter uninhabited houses wherein you have your necessity wherein you have your necessaries, and the law knows what you do openly and what you hide. Say to the bleeding men that they lower their gazes and restrain their sexual passions, and that is pure for them. Surely Allah is aware of what they do and say to the bleeding women that they lower their gaze and restrain their sexual passions and do not display their adornment except what appears thereof and let them wear their head coverings over their bosoms and they should not display their adornment except to their husbands 
Are there fathers? Are there are the fathers of their husbands? Are there sons? Are the sons of their husbands? Are there brothers? Are there brothers' sons? Are there sisters' sons? Are there women? Are those whom their right hands possess? Are guileless male servants? Are the children who know not a woman's nakedness, and let them not strike their feet, so that the adornment that they hide may be known, and turn to Allah all, O believers, so that you may be steadfast, so that you may be successful. So remember that the hijab is not a particular garment, it's a standard of modesty. That sort of equates to the male standard of modesty in a uh, sense of uh, where sexual arousal can possibly occur. Um, women obviously have a lot bigger of an area, and instead of choke chains, like in some cultures, uh, covering over the head is, you know, easier on a woman. Um, and see, obviously the most is shown to the husband, and then uh, less, less and less and less. Um, Obviously, the guest of the house. Um, and marry those among you who are single, and those who are fit among your male slaves and your female slaves. If they are needy, Allah will make them free from want out of His grace, and Allah's ample giving, knowing. And let those who cannot find a match keep chaste until Allah makes them free from want out of his grace, and those of your slaves who ask for a writing, give them the writing, if you know any good in them, and give them of the wealth of Allah which he has given you, and compel not your slave girls to prostitution when they desire to keep chaste, in order to seek the frail goods of this world's life, and whoever compels them, then surely after their compulsion, Allah is forgiving, merciful. And certainly we have sent to you clear messages, and a description of those who passed away before you, and an admonition to those who guard against evil. So, whether it's lawful or unlawful sexual relationships, the slaves are not to be forced. And Islam does not allow for slavery as a motivation for war. And it doesn't have the generational slavery. Um, but the word chaste, if chaste means sexually pure, which definitely in some definitions it means that, but there's this Christian concept that, uh, that a divorcee... Uh, was somehow is somehow unchaste because they've had the relationships, but sexual purity is not lost in marriage. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. A likeness of his light is as a pillar on which is a lamp. The lamp The lamp is in a glass, the glass is as it were a brightly shining star lit from a blessed olive tree, neither eastern nor western, the olive whereof gives life, the, the oil whereof gives light. Though fire touch it not, light upon light, Allah guides to his light whom he pleases, and Allah sets forth parables for humanity, and Allah is knower of all things. So you remember the gender, the gender neutral, uh, the masculine is usually as a gender neutral. Um, he and him and such things for God do not refer to God being male. And typically your addresses that use those terms refer to everybody. And obviously when you're pairing, oh, this is the female, so this has to be seen as the male. You know, because some things it's important to emphasize that humanity does them together. 
in houses which Allah is permitted be exalted, and his name be remembered therein, and therein do glorify him in the mornings and the evenings, men whom neither merchandise nor selling diverts from the remembrance of Allah, and keeping up of prayer, and the paying of the poor rate, and they fear a day in which the hearts and eyes will turn about. Say, you know, business of any sort, as long as it's righteous business, that doesn't have to distract or deter a person from their work for God at all. It's part of their work for God. You know, with the right intentions and remembrance and that sort of thing. That Allah may give them the best reward for what they did, and give them more out of his grace, and Allah provides without measure for whom he pleases, and those who disbelieve, their deeds are as a mirage in the desert, in the desert which the thirsty men deem to be water, until when he comes to it he finds it not, and he finds Allah with him, so he pays So he pays him his due, and Allah is swift at reckoning, are like darkness in the deep sea, and there covers him a wave, about which is a wave, above which is a cloud, and darkness one above another. When he holds out his hand, he is almost unable to see it, and to whom Allah gives not light, he has no light. It's interesting, the accuracy of these metaphors for someone who, you know, had Muhammad invented this, you think you'd be getting some of these things wrong. Seest thou not that Allah is he whom do glorify all those who are in the heavens and the earth, and the birds with wings outspread? Each one knows its prayer and its glorification, and Allah is knower of what they do, and Allah's, and Allah's is the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and to Allah is the eventual coming. Seest thou not that Allah drives along the clouds, then gathers them together, then piles them up, so that thou seest the rain coming forth from their midst, and he sends down from the heavens mountains wherein is hail, afflicting therewith whom he pleases, and turning it away from whom he pleases, the flash of his lightning almost takes away the sight, Allah causes the night, and the day to succeed one another. Surely there is a lesson in this for those who have sight, and Allah has created every animal of water. And Allah has created <coughs> and Allah has created every animal of water, so of them is that which crawls upon its belly, and of them is that which walks upon two feet, and of them is that which walks upon four. Allah creates what he pleases. Surely Allah is possessor of power over all things. We have indeed revealed clear messages, and Allah guides whom he pleases to the right way. And they say, We believe in Allah and in the Messenger, and we obey, and then a party of them turn away after this and they are not believers, and when they are invited to Allah and his messenger, that he may judge between them, lo, a party them, turn aside, and if the right is on their side, and they hasten to him in submission, is there in their hearts a disease, or are they in doubt, or fear they that Allah and his messenger will deal with them unjustly, nay, they themselves are the wrongdoers. You know, there's that idea 
I hate to use the term of uh, Bible thumper, but you think of that as like, oh, when they can use it against people. Inspiration and revelation are what they deem to be such. They're going to bring it out. But when it's not in their favor, uh, you know. Are there any hearts in disease or any in doubt or fear that Estelan, his messenger, will deal with them unjustly? They, they themselves have wronged dreams. The response of the believers when they are invited to Allah and his messenger that he may judge between them is only that they say we hear and we obey and these it is that are successful and he who obeys Allah and his messenger and fears Allah and keeps duty to him and these it is that are the achievers and they swear by Allah with their strongest oaths that if thou command them, they would certainly go forth. Say, swear not, reasonable obedience. Surely Allah is aware of what you do. Say, obey Allah and obey the messenger. But if you turn away, he is responsible for the duty imposed on him. And you are responsible for the duty imposed on you. And if you obey him, you go aright. And the messenger's duty is only to deliver plainly. Spiritually, there is no choice, but in physical terms, it's not something forced. Uh, religion is just conveyed. Allah has promised to those of you who believe and do good that he will sh surely make them rulers in the earth as he made those before them rulers, and that he will surely establish for them their religion, which he has chosen for them, and that he will surely give them security in exchange after their fear. They will serve me, not associating aught with me, and whoever is ungrateful after this, they are the transgressors, and keep up prayer, and pay the poor rate, and obey the messenger so that mercy may be shown to you. And Zakat al Fitr is the, uh, as close to the Eid prayer, you know, the night before, um, but before the Eid prayer starts, the giving of about a day's worth of food um, to the poor. Um, and every year, the Sakat al Amal, um, the charity of the deeds is a fortieth of your savings. And there's there's other things, but that's the main one. Oh yeah, the Kurbani can be considered the that, but that is something apparently most people I don't think have the means for. Think not that those who disbelieve will weaken in the earth, and their abode is the fire, and it is indeed an evil resort. O you who believe, let not those whom your right hands possess, and those of you who have not attained to puberty, O oh, you who believe, let those whom your right hands possess, and those of you who have not attained to puberty, ask permission of you three times before the morning prayer, and when you put off your clothes for the heat of noon, and after the prayer of night, these are three times of privacy for you. Besides these is no sin for you, nor for them, some of you go round about upon others. Thus does Allah make clear to you the messages, and Allah is knowing wise. So obviously after the dusk prayer, before the dawn prayer, and in the pre-early afternoon prayer sleep, if people want to take such sleep, are automatic times of privacy. And when the children among you attain puberty, let them seek permission, as those before them sought permission. And thus does the law make clear to you his messages, and Allah's knowing wise. 
and women past childbearing, who hope not for marriage, it is no sin for them, if they put off their clothes without displaying their adornment, and if they are modest, it is better for them, at a law's hearing, knowing, and there is no blame on the blind man, nor any blame on the lame, nor blame on the sick, nor on yourselves that you eat in your own houses, are your father's houses, are your mother's houses, are your brother's houses, are your sister's houses, are your paternal uncle's houses, are your paternal aunt's houses, are your maternal uncle's houses, are your maternal aunt's houses, are wherever you possess the keys, are your friends, it is no sin in you that you eat together, are separately, so when you enter houses, and greet your people with a salutation from Allah, blessed, goodly, and thus does Allah make clear to you the messages that you may understand. Only those are believers who believe in Allah and his messenger, and when they are with him on the momentous affair, they go not away until they have asked leave of him. Surely they who ask leave of thee are they who believe in Allah and his messenger. So when they ask leave of thee for some affair of theirs, give leave to whom thou wilt of them, and ask forgiveness for them from Allah. Surely Allah is m forgiving, merciful. Make not the calling among you of the messenger as your calling one of another. Allah indeed knows those who steal away, from among you, concealing themselves. So let those who go against his order beware, lest a trial afflict them, or there befall them a painful chastisement. See, obviously the idea is that what God has revealed is not just, you know, disconnected, and it's, you know, what's going to do something for you in the afterlife. In this world, it is the best commands. Now surely Allah's whatever is in the heavens and the earth, he knows indeed your condition, and on the day when they are returned to him, he will inform them of what they did, and Allah's knower of all things. It's interesting that that being 64 verses, it's that we find um, if we look at a number that represents light, and as far as a single digit number, it's eight. So eight times eight is 64. Um, and so I guess I should close with, well, I guess I can close with, uh, from the seventh, uh, of Ramadan. In the last two thirds of the night, you know, between the dawn, uh, the dawn and the uh, dusk, not sunset and sunrise, you know, the dusk and the dawn. Um, there was a low sound. And something below moved something above and again it was like clouds but more like those curly you know those softly twisting sort of clouds but movement upwards with a faint a faint yellow white with a faint yellow but a Blue sound, lower than that, you know. A constant rumbling, but a pleasant sort of rumbling. And this was one of those going to sleeps that was all pain just washed away, sinking, wiping pleasure. And then through the colorful, you know, bit of going to sleep, gone.